Can you hear us, first of all? That's probably the main worry of tonight. We can. Do testing, you see us? testing. One, two, three. Right, uh, thank you all for coming along. This is our first ever Talk Norwich City Live podcast. Um, what better way to kick things off with, than with Norwich City Hall of Famers, legends, Russ Martin. Are you a Hall of Famer? I'm not yet, no. Well, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he should be, shouldn't he? Oh, he dear, Jack. Well, you should get absolutely cane for that every day at training, <laughs> didn't he? Wes always said that, no. How are um, you, mate? I'm hoping to be. Let's use this podcast to make it happen. Yeah? Is this the platform to start things? Yeah. <clears throat> good start. No, I'm good. Where's you good? Yeah, I'm great. Yeah. Walk away. Chris, good? Dreamy. Living good. the dream every day. So what, what, what's happening with you boys now? Because the last we saw of you, Russ, was walking off the pitch at Millwall. Yeah. 4-0 defeat. What a day that was. Things were tough. The last time we spoke to you on the podcast, you were excited about Farker. Yeah. You said he was a man. Got that wrong, didn't I? You were willing to for play me. for. <laughs> um... Um, What's the last two years been like? It's been, um, well, going back to then, um, obviously I just signed a new contract. Um, the plan was kind of in place with Stuart and the club to sort of start looking towards the end of my playing career um, and finish at Norwich with the hope of starting to work there as well in whatever role. Um, so that was a plan, but things don't always go to plan. Um, Daniel had other plans and it became fa fairly obvious fairly quickly. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately, obviously I left. I went on loan to Rangers. Um, enjoyed the first couple of months after that. Didn't really at all. Couldn't wait to get home. And then, uh, yeah, summer, summer came. And it was obvious I wasn't going to be part of the plans again. So you have to make a decision. I wasn't, you know, it's not, it's not nice just getting paid, not playing. And, and, and after you've been a big part of something somewhere, as Wes will say, it's difficult to then become, well, not even a bit part. I was mm. totally out of it. I was training with the 23s. And I was trying to add value to them boys and help them and Matty Gill and... Um, but it just became difficult and I love the football club I love the city I love the place but um, I think sometimes it's just, you know when it's the right time and uh, it was the right time to leave so uh, off I went Chris I can remember we were at the den weren't we that day we were <sighs> defeated 4-0 and I, there were calls at that point for Farker to go I think from some fans and Russ got a real yeah, yeah. but a it real, wasn't I mean I think that, that, yeah I played yeah, played, yeah. yeah. cheers Wes Wes got out of it as always <laughs> <laughs> Wes got let off. Didn't even Wes me right. on it. If, if oh, I remember, terrible. if I remember rightly, it was actually Marcel Franca that that not Who's pulled he? his weight. In, in all I'm honesty, not I'm not naming names. He didn't play a game since. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was uh, that was yeah, by far and away the worst day of my performance. Yeah, yeah, worst day terrible. of my career, personally. <laughs> not just my Norwich one, but horrific. I got booed off on the 60 odd minute or whatever it was of taking oh. off. Um, missed my train home. Just a <laughs> terrible day. <laughs> I remember saying. Like, I remember saying. I remember phoning phoning my. Um, my brother actually, he came to the game and he left early because he couldn't take really? what I was getting anymore. He was like, I just wanted to get out of there. So he was waiting for me after and um, he got the train. So he met me in uh, Ust or Victoria, wherever he was. And um, yeah, he just couldn't deal with it anymore. He was like, he was close to breaking. Yeah. And I, th I said, I think I've just played my last game. And it's really difficult at the time because you don't know, but we, things change really yeah, quickly, change but quickly. just had that feeling. And, uh, and, it, and it happened to be, obviously I'd have loved to finish on a better note like Wesley mm. did here. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. deserved it. He deserved it totally, 100%. But it's, it's, it's what happened. I'm not bitter at all. I love the football club. Always will. And um, yeah, it Good happens. Answer. It's done. Good boy. Wes. Yes. Um, sure. yeah. When Daniel first walked through the door, how did you feel at that point? Did you think, okay, this is going to be good for me? This is going to be good for the team? Or were there thoughts in the back of your head that thought this might not work out for some of our boys that have been here all a long while yeah obviously it's different you know here first time having a foreign manager come in um so he kind of changed the regime the structure of the club you know probably didn't help you know that i was getting on a bit so you know <laughs> still but, had it though, nah, yeah but was, i think if i was younger i would have really enjoyed it more you know i think the older lads didn't enjoy as much because of the training regime in most days, double sessions. Was but it tough? It was tough. Yeah, it was very tough. But you see now the benefits, you know. Mm. I think over time, you'd see like the lads getting fitter, stronger. But within a year for me, it probably wouldn't have worked out as well. But if I was younger, I would have loved the training and stuff like that. Chris, you've said from a fan's perspective, when Russ leaves, when Wes, Wes leaves, when Cameron Jerome leaves, mm. you thought there was almost a power issue with Farker and he wanted that control. Thanks for throwing me in the deep end. <laughs> <laughs> Did you think that was the case? And it'd be interesting to hear uh, if this was the case from the player's point of view as well. I, I certainly thought that neither of them should have gone when they went. And I think that the manager could have used them more as a resource when bedding in. I think it was 
he went cold turkey, but fair play because it's all come out well in the end, of course. But I personally felt like having Russ on the bus, having Wes on the bus, getting them on the on pitch the or just on the bus. Hey, mate, <laughs> you be careful. Wes on the pitch, Russ on you the bus. Be careful, <laughs> say, Jim. I, I personally, if I was the gaffer, I would have played them more. Simple as that. I was gutted when 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 Wes went because I thought he had another season in him at least. So yeah, that's my thank opinion. you. How did Me it feel? Too. How did it feel Me from too. the dressing room? Was there a power issue? Did you feel like Daniel didn't like having them experienced players around who, who had been um, there for a while? Well, he hadn't had it, had he? He was an under-23s yeah. manager at, at Dortmund. Um, and there wasn't a problem, really. It was, never, it was never personal. There was never a power issue. In fact, I, probably, and, and maybe stupidly, I think a lot of people have said, I really tried to help him even when I was out of it, especially with the young lads, um, with James and, and the Murphy boys and people like that, because they can... It's up and down when you're young, and it? it, yeah. it's difficult to be consistent in your in your behaviour and your performance, um, especially when you know you're a good player. So I still try to play a role in dressing, but I think it was obvious to us, I mean myself and and Nasey, a bit different with Wes because he's a different kind of player. And I think Wes would always, even when he was on the bench, he's got a chance of coming on and, and playing and, and changing a game, which he's done on loads of times. But um, yeah, I think we knew Cami as well. I think. It was going to change. It was just how long it was going to change. And the club probably needed it to, to a certain yeah, point. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, I, yeah, I it was great to Chris. bring young yeah. players through. We and could have um, a role, couldn't we? We could have probably played a role, but from the outside, I think um, it was time for a change. Yeah. And now you see the benefits of well, how Towards the end of, of your days at Norwich and, and Russ as well, yeah. how did the structure feel above the manager? Was that structure needed? Because it felt at times, from the fans' point of view, it was getting toxic and it wasn't quite working. Could you feel that on the training ground? Um, no, not really. I just think, um, like, you know, the gym, everything was changing, like, you know, all for the good facilities. For good or for bad? For good. Right. For good. You could see it happening. And, um, you know, obviously Stuart's come in and he's done an excellent job. He's changed the club into, you know, um, a, a great structure, young kids coming through. You know, obviously when we were playing, we are playing the Premier League, we've got a lot of experienced players. And, um, you know, when we got relegated, um, you know, it didn't help that we lost a few players and we didn't come back up. And, um, you know, it was right for the time, I think, for Daniel to come in and give um, the young players a fresh start. I mean, you'd both gone through promotions and relegations before. Yeah. That final relegation from the Premier League that you both suffered, did that feel slightly different because the core was different, wasn't it? I know, Russ, you've gone on record before on Owen's podcast and said that season we went up and brought Ricky Van Wolfswink or players like that in, that cohesion that you had and that went so well, that suddenly goes, and it's almost that pursuit to the Premier League, isn't it? Did it feel different? Uh, yeah, I think the biggest difference is now, the club's got a real plan. I think yeah. Stuart has got a real... You're saying it uh, didn't before? Um, I think we moved to... I, I, no, I'm not at all. I think David done a brilliant job at what he'd done, but I think we, um, if I'm being totally honest, I think we probably carried it on the pitch a little bit, and it went really quickly. Mm. So that's re we went bang, bang, from League One to Premier League. You can't plan for that. Right. You can't. Mm. It's... You, they, I think they had an eight-year plan to get into Premier League or a mm. five-year plan. You can't plan to then go bang, bang. So then all of a sudden, it, it's no one's fault. The cl we've gone like that on the, on the pitch and, the, and everything else, it felt like it was just trying to play catch-ups. So all of a sudden, the recruitment plan changes. The, the facilities, we can do that a bit quicker. Or actually, do we invest in the facilities or do we try our best to sign some players we think will keep us in the Premier League? So it changed really quickly. And I think what you've got now is you've got stability. You've got someone who the owners believe in to, to bring their vision of the football club because at the end of the day it's the most important people the owners of the football club and the fans how they want their club to look and they know how it should look and it went away from that and that's why they brought Stuart in and as Wes said he's done a um, I can't speak highly enough of Stuart the way he dealt with the older players as well through it in right. terms of uh, so it wasn't a bitter end no not for at you all. Guys. Not, no no not with um, not with Stuart at all and, and not even with Daniel listen you, you I'll, I'll disagree with him on a lot of things or whatever but he's done a brilliant job and, I'm, and we're both delighted to see yeah. the club doing so well. But with the way Stuart handled it and, and the older lads, Nasey will say the same, and, and the way he's gone about his business in terms of improving the, the training ground. I went up there today, he wanted to show me around today. It was brilliant. He invited me in. I Still went welcome and, back then. Yeah, amazing. So um, it's exciting what's going on. Mm. And, and that's what they've got now. So regardless, I think they'll go up this year. You do. I don't yeah. attempt fate, but it's going to happen. They've been unbelievable, been brilliant. So whatever happens next season, the club's going to be whether they stay up, whether they don't, whether they kick on again like Wolves, the club's going to be in a brilliant place and it's stable now for... And also you've got the training ground now that people actually want to come and play, whereas before it was, you're selling Norwich as actually come and play because we'll, we'll give you a 
window in the Premier League. It shouldn't be like, actually, come and play for Norwich because you really want to play for mm. Norwich, not just in the Premier League. Jesus. You've got a brilliant training ground. You know, this is how, this is how we do it. This is the vision. This is our identity. And players will, players will buy into that. Wes, did you see players, especially when we were in the Premier League, coming to Norwich, as Russ said, they're almost using Norwich as a stepping stone for something bigger at times? Yeah, I don't think people came to Norwich like for the wages or the training ground or like that. You know, I just think they got, wanted to get to the Premier League and then mm-hmm. obviously a step, they wanted to take a step by step and get into probably a top team. But uh, now you see the change and of it, like the training ground, people will go there and you show them around, you, you know, you're excited, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. you know. Um, back then you weren't excited with the gym or like that. You just wanted to play, you know, for Norwich. But uh, yeah, you see the times changing and obviously now they have a great structure and if they do go up, um, you can see them staying there for a couple of years. No, nope. Chris, I suppose from a fan's perspective, you look at this and we've lost two legends from the club, mm. but it almost has to happen if you're going to move forwards, doesn't it? And, and that's a sad thing, but at times it's inevitable. Uh, yeah, possibly. I think it was, as I say, it's quite cold turkey, quite extreme, but it's paid off. Um, I think the club have put all their chips on on all the Germans and, and, and it's worked. And hey, but it's excellent, isn't it? And I think it's I think it's refreshing to see Norris City as a club on purposely doing something di- differently, being disruptors in the football industry, even by incorporating fan channels like ourselves. Has it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, um, Jake Humphrey shared a cracking story on the TNC podcast, last episode plug, about even just a small thing at Colney Now, where Jake says to Stuart, you see that yogurt pot that's blowing around the wind? That doesn't happen in F1. And Stuart's brought in so much from other sports. Um, so it's not just about football and it's just about excellence everywhere. All of the fine details, all of the marginal gains. And if pink dressing rooms work and pink... Hey, by the way, who's in the pink dressing room? Unfortunately, yeah. me. Yeah. <coughs> well, you've lost them, Wes. I've lost, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Wes, 10 years at the club, three promotions, four years in the Premier League. How do you look back at it? Yeah, obviously, yeah, successful. Um, we had a great time. Um, obviously, you know, been relegated a few times, but um, you know, probably the highlight of our my career and probably Russ's was Wembley final. Mm. You know, um, amazing day. You know, there's so much on it. Um, I didn't mm. sleep for the whole week beforehand. <laughs> no, no, I could, didn't even drink after it. I he was played so like tired. he played like it as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was such a such a massive day. You know, um, Middlesbrough bet us twice that season, so we kind of needed to to beat them, get one over them, and um, you know to, to get back to the Premier League where you know where we played so well. Yeah. It was an amazing achievement. Was it nerves that kept you from not sleeping? Yeah, then? it was. Yeah, Just Did, so thought, was, I always thought about losing the game. And um, I didn't like it, so um, I didn't sleep for the whole week. It felt from... Go on, Chris. I, I felt the opposite of that. Did yeah, you? yeah. I thought yeah, it was, I was, our preparation I was, so was brilliant. I thought I said it before, I think. Did I say it to you? I might have said it before, but the week just went perfect, didn't it? And yeah. on the day, I was, there was never any doubt, really. And it was, yeah. it was a strangely perfect night afterwards, game, wasn't it? Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect, perfect night afterwards? I don't know if it was perfect. <laughs> it was a night. I don't know what it was, but it was a, it was Spe- a night. Speaking of sleepless nights, what about Russ, of course, one of my favourite memories of you, that goal against Liverpool... Talk yeah. us through that moment and how it felt to equalise against them. Um, I can't. Obviously, yeah. It was, it's Jazz, a, Jazz just had a baby. Kid. Yeah, she just had kid a baby. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Yeah, a, yeah. Long story short, she'd given birth at, well, no, she'd gone into labour at 11 o'clock. We were in Liverpool. So shot How f- inconsiderate. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so I knew it was going to happen. I knew it. She was due on a Sunday. Like, and um, went. Yeah. <laughs> and then Phil drove me home, bless him. We took it in turns. Uh, Phil Lithgow, still here, club. He's a legend. Mm, yeah, top yeah, guy. What a guy. Um, he makes all the new lads feel so welcome. He's brilliant. Um, so he drove me home. I got back. We went straight to the hospital. And then uh, Leo was born at 9.30. So we hadn't slept, obviously. Um, I saw that I looked at the clock. I thought, I've still got a chance of playing. And then, and then Alec, Alec, <laughs> Alex rang me, the manager, and said, how are you feeling? Have you, have you managed to sleep? I went, yeah, I've got a few hours. I hadn't at all. And he went, well, Delia, and that will wait for you on the plane. And they're leaving at half 11, but they'll wait half an hour at 12. So... Uh, I looked at Jazz and she was like, yeah, just go. Like, Brilliant. <laughs> so I left Jazz, gave Leo a kiss, gave him both a kiss. She was asleep, went home and my mother-in-law opened the door. I was like, what are you doing here? I was like, um, I'm going to go and play up at Liverpool. So, but you uh, had a few house chores to do after yeah, that. Yeah, quick. She was, I don't think she was very major happy. girlfriend yeah, 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 I, I, I wonder if you went up the way to Carlisle. <laughs> yeah, not sure it was the same. Anyway, end, end up scoring. It wasn't a bad goal, by the way. It was, was all right. It? Oh, it was a great goal. It was, it was all right. Great finish. Close your eyes. Yeah. Flick. For someone who you've called limited before, I think it was a pretty good goal. <laughs> but we won't bring that up. Um, I'm not hanging on to things here, am I? I'm not <laughs> um, yeah, scored. Somehow, I was late for the referees meeting and everything. I got there like 20 past two. 
Um, Delia kept me awake, bless her, on a plane. We were talking for ages. And then, what, she, yeah. what did she do to keep you awake? Just out of interest. She was asking me. So regret. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. She offered me a glass, glass of wine. wine yeah. She offered me a glass of wine, yeah. No comment. No said comment. no. So, yeah, I, I felt horrific. And then I got hammered by Sky Sports News reporter the next day. Female reporter says, so what are you doing today? I said, oh, I'm in at the training ground getting a massage. And where's your wife? Went, oh, she's at home. So your wife's just given birth to a baby. You left her straight away. Ooh, and now man. you're in training getting a massage. Like, yeah, that sounds pretty bad, actually. <laughs> <isn't it>? Yeah. <laughs> felt terrible. Wes, have you ever flown with Delia on that plane? No, I never got have the opportunity, not? no. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Fair, You know, Russ is probably one of the... Adam Jury. Yeah, Adam Jury, well, yeah, yeah, Adam Jury does. Doesn't Russ, surprise me. He had to get the bus back, though. I flew back as well. What goes on on a private plane with Delia? Um, <laughs> there were other people. Russell there wasn't Dole. just Russell me. Russell Adler. <laughs> I promise. Eddie had looked after you. <laughs> Um, how have things been since, Wes, since you've, that game against Leeds, your final game, I don't think any Norwich fans, please say if you think I'm wrong, thought you'd be playing in England with another club. They probably thought Norwich was the final club, might go off for a nice jolly in America or something. What went through the mind when, when West Brom come calling? Um, obviously, you know, I've went on a few... Um training sessions in the summer with a few clubs and um, they asked me to come down, me and Russ to train and um, you know they asked me to sign, it was, it was a no-brainer uh, obviously it was difficult because obviously I've been with Norwich for the last 10 years but um, you know I always wanted to continue playing I felt good and um, you know down at the West Brom training ground you see the boys and all that and they're, they're a great bunch of lads so yeah it was a no-brainer to sign for them Have there been any similarities you've seen between what's going on at West Brom at the moment and maybe Norwich from a few seasons ago? Um, yeah, obviously, you know, but uh, at West Brom's a lot of uh, experienced players there. they have been there, done that, played in the Premier League. Obviously with Norwich now, a lot of uh, young lads coming through and, uh, you know, their aim is to get to the Premier League. So, um, you know, it's quite similar in um, years and years ago when we were at Norwich, that young players coming through. Chris, how does it feel seeing Wes in a West Brom shirt? <laughs> Blue and white. <laughs> Blue and white. That's my only answer. I don't, I'm not really that fussed about it as long as it's uh, not the Ipswich Town one then uh, <laughs> I swear to God Wes if you go there no, <laughs> no, Hall of Fame no gone <laughs> statue outside the city stand gone, gone. Yeah. let's talk about Mr Lambert <laughs> <laughs> had to be done Russ yes. when you saw Mr Lambert going to Ipswich what's your thoughts um the <laughs> coys He's got some bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> He's got some bollocks. Um, it didn't surprise me. It didn't surprise me. He's, um, mm. he's, he's really, he's really single-minded. And he's really... Um, is that a good thing? He believes himself. He is if you're a leader, if you're a manager. Yeah, I think so. I think what footballers especially want is someone who um, has got a clear way of doing things and, and is secure in, in the way that they do it. So he's got no insecurity about him at all, about what he's done in the game, what he, what he wants to do. Um, I think what, what he saw is an opportunity to be at a club for a while. He hasn't had that for mm. quite a while. Um, is he it, still living off the success at Norwich? Uh, I don't think so. I think he probably, he's probably chosen the wrong job. I'm the wrong person to speak to. I'm, I'm, I'm a massive fan of Paul. I, I don't support him going over there to the blue and white, and uh, he knows that. Mm. But um, the, he'll always be the gaffer to me when I see him, and it'll probably be the same yeah, with you. Same, yeah. he's, um, and it'll be the same with most of the lads that have played for him. Um, but I think he sees it as a chance to rebuild something like he did, like he did here, really. So um, the clubs are shambles, isn't it? So it can only it can only go one way. You've said that, that you know, it's a, it's a, no, but it was a mess. So it can only go one way, and, and I've no doubt eventually it will sort it out. Wes, what was it? What was that time like at Norwich on the pool? Because obviously we're all sitting here with slightly, you know, biased opinions now about that man. But from the training ground. That must have been such a good time to be playing for Norwich. Yeah, it was a brilliant feeling. You know, we had a great bunch of lads in the it team, did, didn't we? Yeah, it was amazing. And uh, for three or four years, you know, when he was there, um, you know, he changed everything about the training, the intensity, you know, and you just wanted to work hard from, you know, and uh, you'd have a go at you after the game, but you still, you know, afterwards you'd make up with you and say, yeah, well, unlucky, next week now you do better. But, um, you know, obviously Paul signed me when I was at Livingston and um, he got the sack there and then obviously went to Colchester, but... Uh, Obviously uh, reunited with him, you know, after getting beaten seven one by Colchester. That was uh, oh, that's that's terrible. terrible. Oh, that was a terrible day. You he know. left you out first, didn't he? Um, yeah, he yeah. came in, left me out. Did first. he say you were overweight, Wes? Yeah, he did. He did. <laughs> I, was, I had a good summer, you know. I had four two. I did. I did like the cider a bit there back then. <laughs> what did What did you both think about 
Paul Lambert's antics when Ipswich came to town recently, getting sent off, were you surprised at all? No. no. <laughs> okay, there you go then. I'll start over with. Over to you, Jay. Say no more. What, no. What, you say there about that special group of players you had. What was it? Was it the characters you had in there? Was it simply going on that winning run? It, it what was, was it? It was character, wasn't it? There was loads of yeah. character in there. Loads of Big humility. Yeah, and... Yeah. and as we said earlier, it was people who were desperate to play for Norwich. It yeah. was the, it was the best place that Sunderland will ever play. The right. best best club I played for. Yeah. Best, so and everyone was quite aware of that, and it was like you just wanted to enjoy the ride and be part of that, be part of that journey together. And it sounds really cliche and all that, but it was, it was the best dressing room I've played in. Yeah. There even wasn't the, even the lads that weren't yeah, playing. The they playing. Never he, moaned yeah. or gave it. He gave kept them happy. You know, they were happy yeah. for us to win or be part of it. But it was so hard working as well. So it was built on a culture of just pure hard work and honesty. There mm. was no one in there. It wasn't one person. And even one person in the dressing room can change the dynamic of everything. Mm. And Have you was, seen that happen? Yeah, well done. yeah definitely. You've seen you Yeah, seen there was no well. big egos back then. Yeah, it wasn't. You know? It was just yeah, it was just honest, yeah. humble, hard working. Everyone enjoyed training. Everyone wanted to do it for the manager with how good he was, man management. Like we said, mm. even the lads who weren't playing were so happy. I've never seen that any, anywhere. Mm. Um and it was just a, it was a pleasure to come in yeah. every day when it, and, and train, and everyone knew what they were doing. It was really clear. Um, yeah. Cully was brilliant on the training pitch as well, Ian, and uh, it was just a, it was good doing it. it was to be part of yeah. brilliant, special. It was special. And Chris, you could you could see that from the stands as well, couldn't you? You could see that yeah. this group of players got on. Well, I was just going to say you can you can see the links from from that time to now. How much the players are enjoying the journey, I think, yeah. is a key point. Russ. Yeah, yeah. There's a cracking picture of Mickey McGovern screaming with excitement at Timmy Puki and he's not played a game of football mm -hmm. and I just think that is ridiculously special what's going on yeah. right now and you can quickly see as Wes has said as Russ has said the personalities in the changing room um, another moment the centre-backs all having a big man hug um, in front of the Olays of Farker at the end it's, it's special special times and I think that we've certainly got the secret sauce back that we had under these two yeah. I think we as a club have been a bit sport with that because it doesn't come around that often. True. Yeah. And it's, been, it's happened quite a few times recently. They've been the lows as well, but um, we were fortunate to be yeah. part of it a few times. But it doesn't, you, you need to enjoy it. And they're enjoying it. I, I spoke yeah. to Mickey a couple of weeks ago and you're spot on. He's, yeah. he's just loving being part of it. Loving being part really? of it. Well, none of them expected it either. That's the, yeah. I think it was the same as us the first time. When the, when the playoff happened, I think it was a bit different because there was a bit of pressure on us to do it. I think everyone thought, right, we should the go expect back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Expectancy. You know, we struggled with it at the start of the year yeah. when we first went down. But here at the start of the season, and they'll all tell you, they'll all be honest about it, not one of them players thought we'd be getting promoted now. Well, all the journals wrote us off, didn't they? They said, yeah, well, you know, these guys yeah. are but, for relegation. So, which makes what they're doing even, as you said, even more special. Yeah, totally Brilliant. agreed. So, yeah, when we got promoted from League One to Championship, you know, last 10 minutes, so many games we scored in the last 10 yeah, minutes. And, and you kind of see really, the same yeah. here this year. They, you, they keep going till the end and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they get, the, they get the goal, the winner, or, you know, they make yeah. an equaliser. That's not just fitness, is it? That's no. desire. That's, yeah. that's a mentality. That's... That's a belief you're going to win. Yeah. You're going to win regardless. And watch the game against Swansea. They didn't play brilliant. Swansea, Swansea were probably the best they played for a while. Mm. Yet Norwich below par, or not below par, but not as good as they have been. I think just been dust, dust, for two yeah, games. Dust Swansea yeah. away and go one 0 See you later yeah. on to the next one. That's, a, that's a, a real strength. I felt like when you guys were playing, we'd go one down, even two down, particularly at home. And I just thought. Lambert's going to sort it out. He's going to kick the trolley over at half time, and we're yeah. going to we're going to win. And the rest, and the rest, yeah, <laughs> exactly. What did go on? Let's talk about the changing room. Go on, that's right. So, half time, half time. You're losing one or oh, two. He come up with some classics, didn't he? Come yeah. on. What's the oh. what's the worst you've seen him? Um, you may as well now. He he's, told he's me. He told me. Remember, he lost four 0 at home to Milton Keynes. Don't yeah in the cups. That's called playing for now, but. Ooh, um, yeah. Dean Lewin and reminded me that as soon as I signed. Be Remember careful. we bought you four 0 Yeah, but you, Lambo said, Lambo, Paul Lambert said to me, uh, he went, um, "I'm ringing your agent tomorrow." Said, half time. Oh, yeah, half time. Half time. He went, "I'm ringing your agent tomorrow." I said, "Okay," and you'll be gone next week. <laughs> I was like, "All right." <laughs> <laughs> I thought, uh, that's all right. Blimey. I was like, "Is he?" he is. I know he's a bit angry. Yeah. And then he went around the dressing room one by one and said pretty much the same thing to everyone, didn't he? I remember we just, uh, we just got promoted as well, didn't we? Leon Barnett and away to Man City. Remember when oh, we yeah. got stuffed? That was with me. Yeah, and he got he got engaged that week, and but yeah. Paul Lambert obviously bring it up and said like, "What the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> <laughs> Getting engaged on a, on a helicopter yeah, in Norwich. Helicopter. Yeah. <laughs> You were still in that yeah, fucking yeah. helicopter, he was going, wasn't he? <laughs> and he, told, he told Wardy, he asked Wardy where the hole was. We were playing Watford away, bad first half, and big Wardy and Zach, both of them actually, weren't it? They're sitting there like that, thinking, oh no, we're, we're definitely getting here. And, and uh, the gaffer just kept going, where is it? And they're like, what? 
where is it? And you're getting angry and angry. And they're like, what? The fucking hole you're hiding in. Where is it? <laughs> they both just went like that down their chair. <laughs> and, and at that time, you're just relieved it's not you, aren't you? You're like, oh, well, Wade's we, never got it anyway. Wade, no, no, no. we man, we man. Get I, yourself I, a coffee. I got it once when we played, I think it was Preston, and I tried to dink the penalty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've got to tell you off for that. I'm still angry with you for that. I think that was one all, wasn't it? Yeah, I think if we won, we would have gone second. And um, he just kept, he would kept like this and staring at me like this. <laughs> and I was like, my, was, my head was down oh, and, was... and he was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Can that someone explain to me what has happened? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, How like, long did that go on oh, for? Just, Honestly, it was a good 15, 20, 15 minutes. 15, 20 minutes, you're staring at me like this. <laughs> Were you led by fear? Um, Under Lambert, was no, there a, was no, it mainly fear factor? No, it was, it was respect. It was, okay. it was a bit of fear, like you, but honestly, <laughs> He, it was different to how he was, how he came across in the media. He was okay. much more relaxed with the lads, yeah, wasn't he? Like he'd come in and tell his stories, and the lads would all sit there and just listen to him for half an hour talking about it when he played and, and stories of him playing and stuff. Like that. It, yeah. it was, it was, yeah, it wasn't fair. No, it, when he walked in the room, it changed. When he came onto mm. the training pitch, the tempo went up. When he walked into the room, everyone was a little bit more, you mm. know, a, a bit more on edge, yeah. just ready. There but, was a lot of fines. Yeah. He used to always go oh, and the phone and catch people yeah. on their phones, or you know. And he'd say, that's 50 yeah. quid. And if you don't give me 50 quid by the end of the day, it's double. Leon really? Barnett, yeah, Barnett had a habit of saying, mate, like to everyone, didn't he? Oh, mate. What like, is that just all in about? Chat, mate oh, this, mate, mate that. You're not and my he mate. Did he put that for mate all the time, didn't he? Yeah. 20 quid, 40 quid. Yeah. Well, did you see Stephen recently had to clean <laughs> Daniel Farker's car? Yeah, exactly. Did you yeah. see that? Um, Brilliant. Love that. Rate that a lot. Yeah. Jack, I might get you to clean my car. I'm glad, the, I'm glad the wheels carried on. I'm glad the wheels carried on. <laughs> okay, no comment. Yeah. Um, with that being said, it sounds like he was a top man to play under. Has he come calling it Ipswich? <laughs> no, I haven't heard anything. No? no, no. Russ? No. no. You sure? Yes. <laughs> hey, I wouldn't we... do it. I wouldn't do it. There was a very loose joke right, conversation no. about hey, it no, and they knew the answer. I Russ, I know you won't do it, Wes. No, Can you promise right now you will not join that <laughs> On camera. Please. I, I promise I would never join yes. that Yes, <laughs> everyone clapping for <laughs> Oh, right. Yes, right. Until they offer him a fortune. Yeah. Until they offer him a three-year contract. <laughs> <laughs> Show me the money. <laughs> haven't gone here. Anyway, come on, let's get away from it, Switch. Yeah, yeah. Right. What, what's, the, um, what's the journey been like since Norwich? You spoke briefly there about Rangers, and I think it was going relatively well there for a little while, wasn't it? And then you picked up an injury. Yeah. It's got to be tough, having been so settled, your family. I think we often forget that family is often a big part and you're away from them. Yeah. Was that ever in the plan to not play for them? Um, no, as I said, the plan was to, to finish here, family really settled, finish here and, and eventually coach and, and, and hopefully manage one day. Obviously it's changed. Um, I went, I had loads of offers in England, standard championship and stuff. I'm at hindsight in that you look at it and think maybe it would have been better career wise, but the chance to go and play for a club like that of that stature and mm. size was, was one I wanted to take. So, I went there, as you said, first two months were brilliant. We won 10 in a row. People started thinking we might even catch Salty. Um, and I got injured before the first uh, old firm game in my back. Um, rushed back stupidly, really. But for the manager, I knew Graham from, from Norwich, under 18s, and a uh, good guy. Um, and came back way too early. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't run. A few, you, a few of you have probably said that for years. But um, <laughs> I gen like, yeah, I couldn't, I wasn't very much, I was totally different for the two weeks before when I when I hadn't injured my back um, and they'd offered me a contract just before that so and obviously I said look I need to go back to Norwich see what's happening and then once I came back from injury played pretty poorly as did the team for the next three or four games um, and then that was that was that was that wasn't on offer anymore and I realized then it was like three games to go and it was one of them where you just need to get home I was away from the family and Wes would tell you like he's traveling a lot this year and it, it's when you've been used to being 10 minutes away from the training ground seeing your family taking your kids to school every day picking them up and then I'm seeing them once a week mm. tr flying down and then flying straight back up difficult mm. it's not it's not easy it's probably something I took for granted and, and, and found a lot more difficult than uh, I thought I would have I was living in the western of Glasgow which great on my own and people are like, oh, it must be amazing away from the kids like coffee shop but yeah you, you miss your kids don't you it's yeah, difficult you so um, it didn't go to plan it didn't go to plan and obviously uh, left this season um, went to Warsaw for a bit play a coach with my mate Dean um, too much travelling well, again way too far away from the kids I got to a point where I'm driving up the M6 and thinking what am I doing I'm not doing you know not did doing you fall this. out of love with the game uh, no I love football I fell out with I fell out I fell out of love with the idea of I've got to a point in my career now where 
I've played the highest level I'm going to play. You, to you have to accept that. Huh? Yeah, yeah to exactly. I'm not going to get on private planes anymore. <laughs> That's done. But I think Wes would tell you, he's the same. Like your, bod- your body's not what it was. That's that's for sure. And and it got to the point where if I don't really need this and it's not improving me for the future, then what am I doing it for? Mm. I'm just I, I don't need to do it for Much. my ego. I don't need to do it for. I'm not. I wasn't going to Walsall for finance. That's for sure. So I, it got to a point where I was sitting there in the car and, and and he's my mate, the manager. I played with him years ago. He's a great guy. And I, I had a chat with him. I was just honest with him. I said, look. And it was early December. I said, I'll I'll do it till January. Um, but I'm not giving you what I can give you. And and. It's, it's, it works both ways. He wasn't getting the best out of me because it, it just wasn't right. It just didn't feel right. So that happened, and then obviously, yeah, ended up a couple of weeks out. And did it? Did it? Do you look back at that with slight regret that the fans haven't seen the best of you there? The manager maybe uh, haven't because they don't know the story about you having to travel. No, they no, just see you then, on the pitch. Yeah, but then they'd say it's my fault. I should have moved if I'm not committed to the club and all that. I get all that, but not. Do I regret doing it? I went there to do a bit of coaching at first team level and get experience of that. Um, so, and I've learned loads from it. Learned loads from it in terms of being so close with the manager and seeing what goes on and what he had to deal with. So I've taken loads of it from that. Mm. So I don't regret it at all. Mm. I, don't, I don't have any regrets. Um, people will think that what they want to think of me. Um, I think I helped a lot of their lads in a short space of time to, to move forward, hopefully, um, in terms of professionalism and stuff like that. So we'll see. But I hope they stay up. The manager's a great guy. Um, and... Just wasn't, just didn't work out. Unfortunately, it's one of those things. Well, it's, what's it been like for you with that kind of travelling away from the family a bit? Maybe not playing as much as as you want. Has that been tough? Yeah, obviously, you know, I've been here ten years, so you know, I uh, lived down the road from Colney. So when you know, ten minutes, fifty minutes, I'm at home, at home with the family and the kids. You know, obviously, um, you get used to it, don't you? It's a yeah. comfort thing. And um, obviously, this year I've been travelling quite a bit back and forward. Yeah, it's difficult, um, but you know I love football, I love playing, so I just want to keep playing as long as I can. So yeah, I'll do the travelling, and uh, family comes up to see me now and again. But you know, obviously, kids are settled in school here, and they got all their friends, and uh, uh, my wife is working here as well. So um, yeah, it's tough, but you know you just got to keep doing it. You know, it's like anything; it's a job. You have to keep working hard, and you just got to get on with it. So you still regard Norfolk as home then? Yeah, of course. You know. Um, Eight, no, no, sorry, 10 years ago, uh, me and my wife were traveling down the A14 from Dublin. And she says to me, um, where the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> it took us about six hours to get here. I said, don't worry, we're only here for a couple of years. <laughs> 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 and, uh, you know, obviously now my wife loves it here. The kids love it, settling school, you know, and um, this is our home now. You know, um, we're going to grow old here. And, um, you know, it's a great place to bring up your family. And Nothing there's so many, so many beautiful things to do. And uh, the, nor- the coast is on its uh, doorstep. So, yeah, we, we like it here. What's your favourite restaurant in Norfolk? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Abringham House. Yeah. 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 That's f- free meals for the year for me. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's no, not get, free, Louis, not free. 50%. 50%. Yeah. Let's get a quick plug in for Abringham House. If people don't know, I mean, they're Saturday, so hopefully they're where yes. it is now. What is this place all about? Because you've got a big say in it, haven't you? I, I haven't got a big say at all. I've, uh, How much? I don't think say? I've even got a say. I think he pretends, <laughs> like, he pretends I've got a say. He'll like, ring me and go, What do you think of this? He's already made his mind up. That's Louis, everyone. I think he introduced himself at the start, the owner of this place. Um, this, to me, is something I wish I was still living here to enjoy more. Um, but Because for the people who don't know, you went vegan, didn't you, for yeah, health reasons? Yeah, like five years ago, because um, of my colitis, because I wanted to stop all that diarrhoea and all that nonsense <laughs> before games. So, uh, yeah, so I got... Uh, Louis asked me to become involved in this uh, with Declan Rudd as well, obviously an ex-Norwich goalkeeper um, who who's went vegan as well. I was vegan before it went fashionable, by the way. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But uh, Louis did it for fashion. <laughs> um, no, he didn't. He's, They've got vegan it's about, at Colney now, haven't they? Huh? Right? They've got vegan at Colney because of you now, right? Loads of it. Yeah, loads yeah. of lads enjoy Brilliant. it. I think it's uh, it's about it's first and foremost really good food. It's a really beautiful building that's being it's been used for loads of different stuff over the years, and now it's being used um, to its potential. And it's about being a bit more socially aware, a bit more healthy, um, but healthy but still tasty and, and not, not having to compromise on any of that. And I think it's brilliant. I think it's a great addition to the... I would, obviously, but I'm a bit biased, but I think it's a great addition to the, to the city of Norwich. And it's, been, and it's, and it's growing and it's, and it's becoming more and more popular and people become more and more aware, aware of it. And I think once people come once, they, they tend to come back. Which Russ, is what's, what's your go-to beer in Norfolk? Beer? Yeah, beer well, I don't wise. drink. You're asking drink. the wrong man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, on, mate. Just say it. 
Redwell. Oh, Redwell. No, actually, it is. Not because of beer, because I don't drink beer, and I won't like drinking beer, but what it stands for and the people involved in it is Redwell. Redwell <laughs> beer. Buy yeah, Redwell. There's the plug stuff. Talking about Come to Urpenham and drink Redwell. Talking about beer, any big nights out? Any good oh. stories from, from the times? Here we go. Can involve... I tell you my favourite story about Wes? Yeah, on, you might have heard it before. So we're in London. Not this one again, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're a fancy dress, and it was it's St. Patrick's Day, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And uh, Wes was... Happy St. Patrick's Day, mate. Um, Wes was wearing his uh, leprechaun outfit with a massive leprechaun head. He was looking a million dollars. <laughs> so we had another player I'm not going to name. We were in a sports bar in Piccadilly. Hang on, he what was... do you mean you're not going to name him? We're in a safe environment. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I can't name him because of what was he that... did. He oh. might get arrested. <laughs> was this where, uh, yeah. where, where's Wally? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, where's okay. Wally um, yeah, decided it would be fun Wally. to take his where's Wally costume off right. in the middle of the busiest bar in London That's so in Piccadilly. Um, it wasn't Mark Tierney, no. I, and you can keep naming names. <laughs> 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 So it he was, came. He it, went into it the was, toilet. It was Russ. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> it was. I was sober. It definitely wasn't me. So he came into the toilet, and the Celtic boys were there on their Christmas day, weren't they? So we're all talking, mingling, and all that. And um, he just comes out stark bollock naked, just <laughs> with his wears Wally glasses and hat on still. So he had the hat and the. Yeah. So was, we were all looking, going, "What's he doing?" And he walked to the top of the stairs, and he just stood there like that. <laughs> and then he yeah. just saw all these camera phones come yeah. out. So people will have it somewhere. So Ooh. anyway, we got chucked out. So no, I had to sort it out. We got chucked out. This guy came up to me and went, I think it's time for your uh, party to leave, sir. Okay, no problem. So we've gone outside, and as we walk outside, there's a double decker bus there, open top one, one of the tour buses. So the oh, boys are ways. banging on the driver's door. So he opens the door, and they just all pile on. And the next thing I see is the leprechaun at the top of the bus doing his <laughs> <laughs> head bobbing up and down. And then, next thing I know, a bin lorry comes next to it, an open bin lorry. So no, it's like no. the, the leprechaun jumps <laughs> from the double decker bus. Into the bin lorry. You're joking me, I Wes. thought he was dead, mate. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't move for 20 seconds. And How I'm, many years into playing yeah. for Norwich he did not was know, this? He did not know he was in there. What season was this? Um, what was it? it was a championship, championship season. Yeah. Got I wondered why he'd gone go. down a bit in um, form that year. So I, I thought he was dead. <laughs> Honestly, really he did not move. Yeah. And we couldn't see him because they were all green bags. So they were, he's gone mm. under these... He did not know what You're was in there. You're making this up, surely. I promise you. So I'm running over there. The bus driver's threatening to call all sorts of the police because the lads are still on the bus. Like, <laughs> Wesley Hula. <laughs> then the bin lorry. <laughs> yeah. Throwing yeah, him under the yeah. bus, literally. Then the bin lorry starts driving off. I'm like, oh, no. Oh. So I'm telling him he's got one of the lads in the back. So he stopped. The bus has then gone. A chaos. Anyway, Wes jumps up and everyone in the whole bar just comes out and starts singing Wesley Hula. Oh, don't, nice. Half of them don't know who he is. So we all said it. <laughs> Amazing. How happened? many Guinness were you in that night? I didn't actually drink Guinness at a time. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 cider. So well Magnus, done. yeah. Well done. Good well night. Done. Is it going through your head thinking, what if this gets out? Front page of the EDP nah, the next not day. Ba- not back nah. then. No. <laughs> then yeah. you, you, you couldn't do it now. You couldn't do it now. No one knew who we were. We only got we only in the championship. So. Speak, <laughs> speaking of good nights, Wes, talk to me about the night that you scored that ridiculously important goal against Sweden. Come mm. on. How much was consumed oh. that night? Um, I almost cried actually, at that goal when you scored. Lot. That After goal. Um, we scored uh, against uh, Italy when Robbie scored, um, uh-huh. that was that was a great night on the bus and uh, yeah. afterwards. But uh, did I see you playing your guitar game, in a pub or something? Did I see that or was I dreaming? That? Oh, that was. Um, Were you in playing the guitar Bar. singing? Not yeah. me. No, it was uh, Robbie Keane and ah, okay. uh, Robbie Brady. So no, not me. I, I, I can I can only Irish dance or do a few tumbles. Okay. How, how did Wes? How many caps did you win? Um, 37. Scandalous. Isn't it? That is a shame. It's scandalous, isn't it? it? How many do you get, Russ? Uh, 30. Did I think, you? Yeah. Wes, Russ has thrown you literally under the bus there yeah. with that story. Yeah. Any yeah. night out yes. stories to Go on, throw Wes. him in the deep end? Go on. Uh, it's hard because Russ doesn't drink, so right. Russ is normally. Oh, is he yeah. like a father? No, is, looking after the boys, yeah. He, Russ looks after us, he looks after the key. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where, where we all where we all have to give him uh, 500 quid every hour. You yeah. know, <laughs> the worst job in the world, the, by the way. Is the drinks all gone again, Russ? <laughs> lads, <laughs> lads, I need another twenty quid. Russ Park had a, Russ Russ had a nice holiday problem. in the summer with his family. <laughs> no, a terrible job that. <laughs> um, let's get another plug in. You've got a certain celebration. We can't call it a testimonial, can we? No. C- celebration game. Celebration game. Yeah. Who's on the list for it? Any names that? Drop some names. Come on. Who's not on the list? Can we reveal? All? We yeah, of course you can. Yeah. You need to sell tickets. Yeah. The ginger pele is coming back. Is it? Yes. <laughs> I well, love I think, the dog. I think the last time I spoke to him, he was. Yeah. Um, we Paul, got? Paul McVeigh. Mac- 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 goes away. He's, he? he's pied us, yeah. Fucking hell, he didn't tell me that. <laughs> he was lucky to... Really? He, he told, told me he was coming. <laughs> he was on the bench um, as well, wasn't what? he? Yeah. Anthony was McNamee's like... coming back. Oh. oh. Legend. Um, Go on. Ollie Johnson's coming back. <laughs> no. 
Foxy. Ollie Johnson now. Will, Will, Will Brahimovic yeah. is coming oh, back. Will oh, Brahimovic. Yeah. And Andy boy. Pilkington. Pilks, yeah. yeah Pilks is coming Ads, back. Ads, Lapin, Sai. He's going to be so angry. Yeah, he's going to be angry. Holty. Nels, Holty. Two Holtys. Gary Holt's yeah. hoping Nels, Nels, Nelson Oliveri, yeah? <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> I'd love that. Uh, Alex Teddy. Teddy Teddy will play. Gonna play. Yeah, Michael McGovern's going to play. John and Ryan are hoping to play. Problem is that a lot of the Premier League boys who are going to play, Josh Ooh, well, they'll come back either way anyway. Like, yeah. Hopefully Madders and people like that. But if they can't play, they'll be part of the day. Some. Well, oh, Jack, we got the whole teams there. Well yeah, done. we've given them way too much. There are well done, more. Jack. There are more. But there do, you think more. You, do you think you could defend up against Madison if he does turn out on the pitch? Who? You. I know, he would be playing on my team, so. <laughs> 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 he plays number 10. He can't, him and Wes can't play on the same team. Yeah. You mentioned there, world. Foxy. Um, Where's that night at Portsmouth? Mm. Wow. What what was going through the head when Jackson gets on the end of that cross? Yeah, because that was, was an unbelievable night. It was uh, beforehand. We were in the hotel and um, that was Cardiff against Millsbury right. was uh, on beforehand, and uh, Millsbury just scored inside the fifth, first fifteen minutes, and we're all running outside the hotel corridors, smashing the doors down, <laughs> and running up and down. And I see Corey Smith running up and down, and he slips <laughs> like that. I was thinking, oh my god! So uh, we knew straight away before the game that if we won, we, we got promoted to the Premier League. And obviously, none of us had never played in the Premier League before. So um, you know, I think it was about seventy minutes, was it seventy-five mm -hmm. minutes? And Foxy's put in a great ball, and um, you know. Simeon Jackson uh, scored a great header. You know, Simeon that year scored a lot of important goals. Mm, last yeah, minute against Derby at home to win 3-2. Um, so, yeah, d afterwards it was crazy. What about it? the rubber ring? I remember the rubber ring around your, neck, around yeah. your neck. Was. <laughs> and then, hang on, wasn't there someone, certain someone in their pants? There was, yeah. 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 <laughs> Poor Delia. Do you regret Delia. that or not? <laughs> Do you regret that? Um, or you're like, yeah, nah, fair play. you only get promoted once. Get the don't, off, actually, yeah. we got promoted twice. But, yeah. no, it was a, that was a great night. That was the first time I ever drunk. I said to the lads, I'd... I'd have a drink if we got promoted, thinking we'd never First get promoted, and, and then that's what happened. Mm. And I walked into the hotel at Portsmouth at five o'clock. My T-shirt had gone, I don't know where, and I saw uh, the lads drawing on Michael Folger's head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who who organised? <laughs> it's called who organised uh, Vegas for us, didn't he? That yeah, night, he wasn't going. Oh, yeah, he agreed to Vegas. Yeah. Really? After. Paid yeah. for everything. Yeah. yeah. I've heard lots about this trip to Vegas, the promotion party. Yeah. What went on there? What happens in Vegas? <laughs> Vegas. <laughs> what did, no, we were quite tame, actually. Oh, we? come off it. <laughs> but I, it's a I, I, didn't, I didn't go as with uh, international. Oh, yeah, you weren't allowed. Yeah, I wasn't allowed, yeah. Oh, good excuse. When's well done. Yeah. International, yeah. No, no you weren't in I went the sec second, second time I went. Oh, well, okay. Well, I'll be, yeah. So. Let's, um, let's move on to the current crop at Norwich City. Daniel Farker and his boys, Stuart Webber, top of the table. Wes, did you expect this squad to be where they are now? Um, not now, maybe in a couple of years' time, you know, but, uh, you know, they've done, done brilliant. Uh, got a long young players coming through, you know, you see Jamal and uh, Max, and uh, obviously Ben's coming into the squad, uh, into the team. You know, obviously he's keeping out Grant and Tim. Mm. Um, so, and um, obviously I've never heard of Team Upuki, you know, and, <laughs> you, know, so, you know, he's banging all the gold in. So, and, um, yeah, it, it's amazing, you know, it was a great story, but... Um, you know, obviously I can't really say much because obviously, you know, West Brom and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's great for the, the city and for them to do so well. When you saw Max and Todd and Ben, when you were still there, yeah. did you think, yeah, these boys are going to are gonna make it? Or is there, because a lot of people say you can never really tell yeah. if a player's good at youth level until they're thrown in the deep end. But it feels like they were always rated really highly. Yeah, it's important, obviously, you know, they send them out on loan to a few clubs, you know, just to toughen them up and get games, you know, it's important to get games in. And obviously, they come in this year and uh, you see how well they've done. Um, you know, the, um, they've, they've been great. So, uh, I think more experience they get, more time playing. Championship is a tough league, you know, you need to be strong, mentally strong. And, um, you know, obviously, you see James leaving this year and you didn't think they were going to do too well because James last year was the best player in the league. Mm. And, um, you know, um, since he's gone, they've, they've thrived. Was it annoying to have him in the team with you? And not really, because I was at that stage where, you know, I was quite, you know, happy to, you know, watch James from the bench. You know, he, he, was, he was such a talented player, you know, in yeah. training, he would, he would take the piss left, right and centre, you know, and, um, you know, it was always either Naze or me trying to kick him, you know, just, just kind of toughen him up. But, um, That's why. <laughs> you know, his ability, you know, uh, from free kicks, um, it, was, it was brilliant. Who's your favourite young player right now, Wes? Young player right now. One young player in the city squad right now. In the uh, North City squad. Yeah. Um, uh, just one. 
Max Aarons. Yeah. Yeah. Why? He's just his energy up and down, you know, seeing him probably last year, the year before, you wouldn't look at him and think he's going to do as mm. well. And he's come on leaps and bounds. And uh, it's great and credit to himself, you know, for working hard and obviously credit to um, the Norwich, you know, uh, gaffer. So, Chris, you were there. We spoke about that Millwall game when we got crushed. And you were also there this season. Yeah. What do you think has changed in that just over a year? I think for me, uh, they've switched from um, kind of reactive to proactive in their play. I think they are not more direct necessarily, but um, just... They just got something. There's more drive. There's more oomph about them. God, I'm using awful words here. I just, I just think we get the ball. Marco Steepman. He doesn't look like he can play football, but my God, can he? And he just runs at players. We're putting them on the back foot, and we're just being so much more aggressive. Um, yet yeah, at the back, we're holding possession. Um, so that's been the difference for me. I think last season, it was just a bit passive. It was a bit boring. Um, a bit. We're getting used to it. Yeah, it was really boring, wasn't it? But I just think now it's just so exciting, and as as we alluded to earlier, you go one nil down, and you know we're gonna we know that we're gonna win the game, and we know that we're gonna go on and win this league. Russ, Chris just said passive there. Did it feel passive when you're on the pitch? Did it feel like we were progressing on? Not the when s- Russ was on the ball. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, like Wes said, it takes time. I think the one uh, one thing you can do when it's not going well is is you can try different things, and people get opportunity, and that's what the young lads have had. I think it's been the biggest difference this year is the energy. Mm. Um, mm. I think it was trying to be built last year on, on being solid defensively first. And almost this year, it's gone totally the other way. Um, conceded a lot more goals, but scored a lot more. Much more exciting to watch and much more exciting for the boys to play in. And I think that's been, that's been determined by the lads' energy and the willingness to do it. So Max and Jamal and Ben and people like Toddy, how desperate that Steepy be playing in his right position, how, how desperate mm. they are to to do well. Timo coming here, getting the chance to come and play in the, in the championship and desperate to do well. And that energy's just been, it's transcended through the whole team. And I think, like Wes said, I, I think you can always spot a good player. Can you tell if they're going to be successful at this football club or, or another one? Because I think a year ago, Max was probably in a lot of people's heads 50-50. There was no doubt for me after playing with him quite a few games and, and, and Matt Gill was one of his biggest backer, his biggest belief, he believed in him a lot. Um, there was no doubt he was ready to play. It was whether he had the opportunity to, whether mm. he got the opportunity to. Fortunately, he did, and that would come because the team wasn't performing great. So that's, a, that's something we've used to, the, to our advantage. Um, but I think that, that's been the biggest difference for me, and I've watched a lot of the games this year. It's been the energy and, 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 the, and the drive and the determination and desire. And a lot of that has come from the young lads. Mm. You, you probably asked for the, the older boys to do that, but mm. it's come from them. They've been... They've been Max, for me, has been the best right back in the championship by a mile. I think? Yeah, yeah, by a mile. And he's such a good lad. I'm so pleased with him. They all are. Jamal, yeah, Jamal was one of the best professionals for his age I've ever seen. Yeah, really? So well, dedicated, yeah. so committed. Always not jumping in buses, though. Probably doing... <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's probably still uh, training now, isn't it? He might do and get promoted. Um, but just always going to do extra work. Yeah, they're, they're, great, they're great lads, great young lads. Same with Madders last year. People like that. You're just desperate for them to do well. And I'm so pleased they've got the chance and they've taken it. Who's your unsung hero, Russ? Who's been the player this season that's really almost surprised yeah. you a little bit? Was there someone that well, wasn't doing so well that's now I, gone, I think oh, wow. a lot of them surprised me in terms of Timu has surprised me. I probably, okay. I, I, I probably wasn't expecting him to get the goals that he has. I, mean, I, I presumed, I, I thought Jordan would play most games. Mm. Um, and the fact he's kept a championship goal scorer like Jordan out shows you how well he's done. Lucky, isn't he? yeah. um, Steepy for me has been superb because it... Revelation. Yeah, and he, he wasn't a left back last year, right? He was he was he was playing a position that he he doesn't enjoy. He said at that position he was born to score goals. Yeah, he's so to buy that. Yeah, he's uh, he's he's. I think you can see how much he's enjoying it now. Yeah. He's a great character. He's a good character. Yeah. What's the cr- character. Do you see the crab solo? <laughs> I don't know what that's about. <laughs> but I'm pleased for him. I think he's been excellent. It's so hard when a team does that well to say, oh, he's the untung hero. Yeah, yeah. Zimbo's been so for me. Zimmerman. Yeah, Zimbo's uh, kept yeah. out two, Brands, two, yeah. two international centre halves. Yeah. Where he's come, you know, obviously twenty trees and Borussia Dortmund, mm-hmm. and um, you know, last Massive year, step. last year yeah. he probably struggled a little bit just to get used to the league. But uh, his dedication to the game is second to none. And, uh, you know, I'm actually buzzing for him because he's, he's a great lad. Yeah. And the fans as well. You see Zimmerman, he's doing a lap of honour yeah. after every game. Yeah, he just, <laughs> you guys he just, loves, he just <laughs> loves running the fans, doesn't he? Yeah. He loves it. Loves he's got it, tops yeah. off. The, yeah. the Terminator. Yeah, you've, yeah. Got to, you've got to give a mention to Tets as well because 
the, the role he plays off the pitch as well as on it. Yeah. And, and I think he's been excellent when he's played. And it, I think he knew he wasn't perhaps going to play every game. But when he has, I think he's so important. Mm. Um, and him and Tom Tribal, they sort of, you know, they sort of rotate it a bit. But honestly, if, you could go on about everyone. Yeah. They've, they've a, just been excellent. They've a been player, excellent. A player that I have to bring up, particularly with Wes sitting next to me, is a lot of fans have said, Buendia... Mm. Could be better than Wes. <laughs> Do you buy that? <laughs> I don't Steady. buy it yet, but I'm just saying what the fans Steady. say. Steady. Wes, it's be not honest. my opinion. Go on, well, what do you think of Emi Buendia? Oh, I think it's brilliant, yeah. You know, coming off the lines and uh, getting in the pocket of space. You know, I've seen him a couple of times this year live and, uh, you know, I've gone to Car Road a few times to take my uh, little boy. And, uh, yeah, he's been brilliant. Why did you, you know? sit? Um... Um, the Barclay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He did it. He was in a lounge. He was in a lounge. I sit, see, Grant Holt, Grant Holt was leading the chance at the fan march. You need to be up the front doing that, Wes, now. It's Wes, part of your role as a Hall of Famer. Yeah. Ross mentioned there about patience. I don't know how much you're allowed to say about West Brom at the moment, yeah. but it feels like gambled a little early, maybe, in terms of what's going on there. Yeah, obviously, you know, um, Darden probably disappointed to lose his job at the time because we're doing so well. We're fourth in the league, you know, but um, obviously... People upstairs didn't probably think it was good enough, you know, after um, being relegated last season. We've kept most of our players um, and added a bit to the squad. We probably thought that we should be the ones getting chased instead of us chasing the mm. top two. And, um, you know, it's a decision they made and uh, we'll wait and see what happens over the next few weeks. Was there ever a, did there ever feel like there was a pressure at Norwich in terms of if this doesn't work this season? So last season, mm. Farker's going to go or was it was it a different sense around the place i think it was a different sense because um you know it bring in a new manager that you know gave him time to uh, develop and um you know see it out kind of see his contract out but um you can see now the rewards that's that they've stuck by him you know a lot of people were calling for his head last year i don't know who but um <laughs> yeah <laughs> me but, neither uh, <laughs> but, i'm so uh, pleased you pulled that <laughs> I think um, he's done a brilliant job and, um, you know, hopefully um, I'll continue. Right, I think that's uh, I think that's it. Thank you both so much for turning out. Let's, um, yeah, massive. Let's, yeah. let's give it up. <laughs> Just a personal oh, thank you from me as well. Thanks all for turning out. I can remember when Chris phoned me a couple of years ago and said, let's start a podcast. I don't think we ever thought we'd get to this stage. So thanks to you, Chris. Thanks to Max on camera, as Paul on the sound as well. Thanks to Epic and House. Thanks, everyone. Cheers, boys. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Cheers.